remercie aussi Olivier Assignois, la grande productrice française Catherine Dissard, le producteur Capitaine Maria Dissing. C'est un rêve, une illusion d'être ici. Just a few months ago, we were shooting in the Indian state of Punjab in extreme heat, humidity, and then later in extreme winter. And now we are in this, in front of this fabulous audience. And uh, thanks to my entire team. Uh, my producer is late today, I don't know. <laughs> and so is the actor. They are maybe caught up in the traffic somewhere. I hope by the time. <laughs> They're soon here, maybe they make a dramatic entry right now. No, <laughs> I'm trying to delay it, so maybe they make a dramatic <laughs> But anyway, I would like to hear. Yeah. Bruno, as our mixer, Catherine, Dusada, co producer, Olivia, co producer, Sunil, uh, Fatima from the National Film Development Corporation, Mikhail, Mark, the musician, and Satya, the DOP. Um, the film, as uh, Terry has already introduced, so you said something about the film, uh, that it's about the political insurgency in Punjab in the 1980s. Uh, there was a militancy movement for a separate Sikh state. Uh, and uh, Punjab went through a very disturbed phase. I was a child growing up in Delhi, and I would read the news in the newspaper. And I used to wonder, you know, why do people, why are people of my faith wanting this? Of course, there's a lot of, there was a lot of complexity behind it. But then it was the common man that suffered during that period in this conflict between the state and the militants. And this film is about the common people, it's about the human problem. And there are many conflict zones today in the world resonating with the similar problems. I hope the film resonates with all the audience. And the film is not just about the subject, the film is also about its form, how the film is made, how it tells the story. It's rhythm, it's cinematic quality, it's mise-en-scene. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Hi, this is Silas Ram, VasianCultureVulture.com. I'm here at the Cannes Film Festival, the 68th Cannes Film Festival. I'm here with Govinda Singh, the director of Truthy Kut, which showed at, in the Uncertain Regards section of the Cannes Film Festival. Welcome, Govinda. Thank you. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the film? Because people back uh, in Britain won't, have, won't know very much about it. I mean, at least people, the Indian population in Britain would know that uh, what happened in Punjab in the sure. 1980s, and it went through a troubled phase where a section, a militant section of the Sikhs were demanding for a separate Sikh state, the Khalistan, and uh, which led to the Operation Blue Star and then the consequent assassination of uh, Indira Gandhi uh, the same year and the massacre of Sikhs on the uh, streets of Delhi. So the film is set in those times. It doesn't directly speak of those events but it uh, but punjab went through a very disturbed phase uh, during and after that time 
and uh, it, the film talks about how the common man suffered in this conflict between these extremist militant uh, movement uh, and its repression by the Indian government. You were quite young when these, obviously these events were occurring, so how, what was your connection to it? How did you feel that that was part of your... Um... Oh, of course I was growing up and uh, to know that uh, uh, I, was, I was growing up in a... I, I was born and brought up in a, in a normal orthodox uh, Sikh family. Right. And uh, to know that uh, I used to wonder, you know, why are people of my faith uh, demanding for the separate state? And because already Punjab had been divided on the basis of religion in 1947, and the Muslim Punjabis were had to go to Pakistan, and uh, and the Hindus and Sikhs from Pakistan had to migrate to the Indian part of Punjab. So, what was the need for? You know, for another division on the basis of religion, and why couldn't Hindus and Sikhs live? together in what was left of Punjab and uh, and so it, it and uh, and uh, yes so and uh, it kind of disturbed me that why 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 were these events happening in Punjab and I wanted to make sense of them for myself right is that really where the inspiration to make a film about it came from to try and the inspiration came from the story these two stories okay. the one the one of the stories Chauthi Kurt and the other one is uh, which means I am feeling fine now and uh, so these two stories are by the Punjabi writer Varyam Singh Sandhu and uh, he's a fantastic Punjabi writer not known much outside Punjab not only known to the people who read Punjabi literature mm -hmm. and uh, and when I read these two stories they kind of completely they were very microscopic in the nature you know they did not talk of uh, events from uh, from uh, from the outside perspective, but from the inside perspective of common people, you know, from a microscopic uh, perspective. But these were two separate stories. They were two separate stories, but they were set about the, in the same time. They were set in the same uh, turbulent phase. One story was talking about a public space, like the railway station or the train, uh, about people wanting to get from one place to the other, and the sense of, uh, uh, yeah, and the other one was about a very personal private space which is the family which is the home and how that space is also under threat so it's about you know it's 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 like it's like it's like from the from this from this from a from a personal secure warm space like uh, a home the whole fear is spreading out in the entire region you know like encompassing the whole atmosphere i understand you don't write a kind of conventional script and you work a lot with non-professional actors can you describe how that was and why you because I, I am interested in local expression, you know, in the very localized idiom, use of language, uh, uh, and uh, my scripts are not very dialogue heavy, and uh, even even where the, there are dialogues, uh, I tell tell my actors to be comfortable and say it the way they would say in their regular everyday life, and not just go by uh, the literary text uh, or what's written in the script. Do these people live through those times. Of course, they are. They are all, and that's why I, you know, I work with people who are from that region, and they all had experience of that time. And though, of course, there's some, uh, some, there are some younger actors who are born post or during that phase or post that phase, and but everybody has uh, vivid memories and li has lived through that times, and uh, some of them uh, uh, are. Uh, they are mostly non-professional actors. Some of them are from the theatre groups in Amritsar. And uh, Amritsar has a very vibrant theatre scene, and I could find some wonderful actors like the train guard in the film. Uh, I met him and uh, through because he was part of some theatre group, and uh, I said, "There's a role for a theatre for 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 a train guard." He said, "I was." He said, "Yes, I, I used to work in the railways," and uh, he brought his own uniform. You know, <laughs> so. <laughs> do, do you think there's a greater willingness of uh, Punjabi filmmakers to revisit the, the, those troubled times? There have been a few films in the past few years, and is there more dialogue now about what was going on inside Punjab at the time? Yes, there has been dialogue, you know, but it's cinema which is dealing with it now, you know. There have been a couple of Punjabi films, um, but um, but made in a very different style from mine. Yeah. And uh, uh, yes, and I think you know, sometimes you need a distance from events, you know, to kind of reflect on them. And perhaps our generation, which uh, lived through these times as, uh, as uh, in the in our growing up period, are kind of want to talk about it and uh, reflect upon it. You know, even something like partition. You know, if you if I were to ask you name one big film made on the partition in India, 
or in Punjab there's none there's none you know really? such a huge you know if you look at the holocaust even now European filmmakers are making films about the holocaust so what is it about that there's still is something which still bothers them and they're still making films about the holocaust yes. and and in India we don't speak of an event like the partition you know <laughs> at, least, at least at least not through our cinema or maybe you know they think that yeah so yeah sorry um, do you think that's a, a problem in the sense that there's it's a still very sensitive subject. That these sensitive subjects are difficult to deal with. It's sensitive subjects are difficult because you end up, you know, being perceived as on one side or the other. You yes. know, if you make a film, you people will think you are soft on the militants, or people will think you are on the side of the Indian government. And nobody wants, perhaps, don't the people are scared of these, these, uh, of being, of being uh, labeled as, you know, okay, uh, of being labeled as uh, an orthodox. Uh, person who is supporting the militancy or somebody who is against the religion by supporting the Indian government. But, you know, you have to, you, it's, yeah, you're right, it's very complex and you have to find a kind of fine line which I thought these two stories already had and which, uh, which was my position also, you know, because I don't want to take sides, I don't yeah. want to implicate people, I don't want to blame somebody, I just want no, to I, present. I think that's very true, the visual language you're yeah. using, it's neither this nor that and that's, a, that's an interesting space and um, the tension within the film is is beautifully executed, yeah. um, and you must have felt that in a subconscious way that you didn't want to be one side or the other. Yes, you know, I, and I said that, that that thread was already in the stories, and I just had to work on that. And uh, and uh, was it hard to translate that from the page to the to a film? It is. It's a challenge. And it's an exciting challenge because, you know, that's what uh, to translate a literary work into a cinematic work is a challenge and uh, you have to find uh, equivalence of uh, what's described because what's, what you read is kind of abstract because, you know, a writer can describe anything, you know, just uh, ima by imagination. And, uh, but f for us, it is we need to find concrete equivalence of those uh, imaginary words, you know, uh, which are abstract in a way, you know. Even if it was a, if it, uh, an, an, uh, a writer can describe a character, you know, spend a, one paragraph describing what a character, lo what, a, what a person looks like, how he dresses, how he walks. And I need to find uh, real life equivalence for that, and which, is, which is almost impossible. So you have to find people who resonate with those qualities and are in close proximity to that idea of the character, to the idea of the character which the writer has put on in, in, in his uh, how, work. How are you finding Kant's experience? It's exciting. It's uh, it's a lot of lot of activity here. You know, there is the artistic side where very strong films with strong artistic uh, expression being shown in sections like a certain regard. And then there's the main co in the main competition. Then there are big filmmakers with, with all the red carpet and uh, premieres. And then there's the market side where people are talking about sales, distribution, selling, buying films. And, uh, Have you been able to see many films yet? No, not yet. I've just seen one film and uh, my film has kept me occupied now with the interviews after the film. I, hopefully I'll be able to catch up from some films from tomorrow. Do you have another project? Are you working on something now? Yes, I'm working, uh, I'm working on another script. It should soon be ready and then I get down to the grind of looking for funding for it. Okay, what's it about? It's again set in Punjab. It's in Punjabi. Uh, and uh, it's about uh, you know the subaltern class in Punjab and uh, their dreams and aspirations told through a musician told through the story of a Kavali singer and uh, but in a very comic and fantastical fashion it'll be light and comedy, comedy. it will be light but of course with the it will have comic elements but it will of course have the tra tragic inbuilt in it <laughs> thank you Govinda my pleasure thank you talking to me thank you thank you